Thank you for joining IMSM for this presentation. In the next half an hour, we will approach ISO's aim for standardization in machine learning. So at this point uh, in time, we are nearly and hopefully reaching that moment when our environment will be referred to as post-COVID. In the last 18 or so months, we have faced numerous challenges, got accustomed to new practices, learned quickly about new technologies, and did our best to fight a battle and uh, ever-changing and many times unpredictable conditions and unfortunately on multiple fronts as well. As a result of the pandemic, organizations worldwide embrace technology and artificial intelligence spread beyond the tech sector. It will fuel the rise of new firms that challenge incumbents indeed. It is also changing the way companies work, transforming traditional functions such as supply chain management or customer service and uh, recruitment, as well as uh, our way in doing our day-to-day -day tasks. So, to be fair, large companies and industries such as finance, those industries, those companies that generate a lot of data uh, tend to be ahead and often build their own machine learning in haste, enhanced systems. But many firms will choose to work with a growing array of independent machine learning vendors, including cloud providers, consultants, and startups. The exponential industry growth and uh, diversification, more like a revolution rather than evolution, cause some concerns. Most could be eliminated should the sector count on solid and internationally recognized sets of best practices to implement and integrate into the organization's management systems. This said, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Marie Dimitrova, and I am the Head of Business Development at IMSM. We are ISO consultants, and the company operates worldwide. This is why we have access to viable data to model new trends and to monitor behavioral changes. I also happen to be an ERC qualified lead auditor on quality, occupational health and safety, business continuity, and information security management systems. And I'm also affiliated to the UK Chartered Institute of Information Security. So, uh, if you look me up on LinkedIn, I'll be the one who appears with a helmet, a rope, and quick draws, climbing rocks on my profile picture. Uh, this is because I consider rock climbing to be an essential activity. Very happy it became an Olympic sport. But this is a topic for a different talk. So, uh, before we start with management systems, I should also advise that I'll refer to artificial intelligence as machine learning during my talk. Uh, for many, it's a question of semantics, and I'm one of those people who are particularly fond of the terms machine learning. So my preferences lay with this denomination. And before we go any further, please allow me to extend an invitation to join my talk tomorrow on the importance, this is a talk on the importance of upskilling quality management professionals in the age of converged security. Now, uh, our marketing team will be with me today and tomorrow. 
you might not see them, but if you pop your questions into an email to marketing at imsm.com, they will bring it on screen at the end of the session for me to take as many questions uh, as you may like to send across. Okay, this said. Why is standardization such a good idea? And how can it help? Standardization makes diversity viable and diversification reliable and robust. ISO standards are widely implemented across all sectors. The ISO, the International Organization for Standardization, has developed nearly 24,000 international standards covering almost all aspects of technology and manufacturing. For those who might not be too familiar with the ISO, this is an organization with 165 state members and it has been operating ever since it was founded immediately after World War II. To explain it in a simple manner, ISO standards are documents that contain practical information and best practice and often describe an agreed and internationally accepted way of doing something or offer a solution to a, to a global problem. IMSM, as I say, is a consultancy organization, one of the many that specialize in implementing ISO management system standards for our customers worldwide, and we help them benefit from best practices in their specific sectors. Machine learning provides businesses with knowledge to make better informed and data-driven decisions, which is a much faster way of doing business than traditional approaches. However, it is not a magical process. Many organizations think it is and it presents its own set of challenges. And here is a list of the challenges that come across our minds when we discuss machine learning. Unfortunately, this list is quite not as exhaustive as we would like it to be. Moreover, this list is also quite dynamic and could easily be complemented with new challenges only too quickly for technical solutions to be designed and implemented efficiently. Therefore, only technical solutions may not suffice to achieve desired outcomes. It is challenging to automate process if these are not properly identified. In other words, before we decide on which machine learning platform to use, we need to define our processes, their inputs and the desired outputs. And whilst machine learning can certainly automate many processes, not all processes need machine learning to be automated. A proper management review on the, on the processes might well prevent organizations from spending unnecessarily on tech solutions. The same maybe should apply to data. We are only too familiar with the most challenging problem machine learning faces, the lack of good data. While enhancing algorithms often consumes most of the time of developers, data quality is essential for the algorithms to function as intended. So we all know what we're talking here about, noisy data, dirty data, and incomplete data are the quintessential enemies of ideal machine learning. How this problem is dealt with is as much a technical as a management issue, 
And as the process is established to evaluate in scope data via meticulous data governance, data integration, and data exploration. Let's have a look on it from a sales perspective. Interpretability is one of the primary issues with machine learning. And if you allow me to illustrate it with an example, I'll talk about an example with a potential artificial intelligence consultancy firm that tries to pitch to a firm that only uses traditional statistical methods. So it is likely to be ignored if the prospect does not see the model as interpretable. If you cannot convince your client, your customer, that you understand how the algorithm came to the decision dead, how likely are they to trust you and your expertise? A dynamic management system might have picked the flaw and addressed it before too late. Other seemingly technical aspects, such as infrastructure or misapplication, no matter how different these are, can also be approached in a more efficient manner from a management point of view. ISO management system standards offer the opportunity to build a dynamic and resilient framework to continually improve the processes and ensure all resources required have been made available. Dynamic and flexible management systems are an asset to organizations that deal with sensitive ethical issues and uh, potential bias. And bias in machine learning can be harmful and in some cases quite literally lethal. We all remember the sad fact about how more lethal the COVID-19 virus to not white minorities at the beginning of the pandemic was. Research published later disclosed that with a few exceptions, pulse oximeters, uh, these are the machines used to detect oxygen levels, overestimate these three times more frequently, which is 12% of the time, in people with black skin rather than white. What does it mean? It means that when this, in, this informs decisions on whom to admit to hospital during a pandemic, more black than white patients are sent home on the mistaken conclusion that their blood oxygen levels are within a safe range. This could have, and unfortunately did have, fatal consequences and was due to bias in algorithms. So, the bias is nearly preventable, as many accidents. And we actually have internationally recognized tools to make it happen. The ISO provides us with management system standards, as well as implementation and technical guidance. Several sector-specific standards are expected to be published shortly as well. The committee working on those standards have recognized that many aspects of the artificial intelligence technology standardization need to be considered to achieve wide adoption. Users care deeply and want to understand how machine learning decisions are made. Thus, the inclusion of aspects like system transparency are key and comprehensive standardization is a necessary part of, of the technology adoption. So the committee working on those issues approaches standard development as an ecosystem and focuses on a number of key areas spanning technical, societal and ethical considerations. Broadly, they aim at delivering foundational standards, standards for computational methods and techniques, 
ensure trustworthiness, identify the so-called application domains, the context in which machine learning is being used, and collect representative use cases. Examples, autonomous driving and transportation, for instance, is one such category. Another example is the use of machine learning in the manufacturing industry to increase efficiency. It is expected that the group's reports will lead to the commencement of a series of projects that could include everything from a comprehensive repository of use cases to best practices for certain application domains. So broad technologies like IoT and machine learning can influence how we exist for generations to come and their adoption creates impacts that go much further than the technology itself. One of these is economic consideration, uh, considerations such as machine learning's impact on the labor force or big data. All new work products are expected to be developed to help us understand how our future works. So, management systems are not new to business. In the last three de decades, organizations worldwide progressively embraced the ISO approach and they started implementing management systems in conformity with international standards. Millions of certifications are carried out every year and up until the beginning of the pandemic, over 60% of these were ISO 9001, which is quality management related. The point I'm making is that organizations do have skilled quality management ex experts who have for the last 30 years worked on implementing best practices and got their management system certified against international management standards. And this is beneficial to every organization that intends on implementing new standards. Interestingly, our data also shows that ever since the pandemic began, organizations show they sudden but sustained in time interest in implementing a broader range of standards and usually integrating these into the existing management systems, if any. For instance, the interest registered towards ISO 27001, which is information security, increased tenfold in the last year and is also closely followed by ISO 22301 business continuity management systems. In some industry sectors such as finance, legal services, IT and network security, as well as hospitality, ISO 27001 took over environmental management, which has normally been seen as the second most implemented standard. Well, ISO compliant management systems are considered to be corporate assets. Raising quality environment, uh, environmental, cyber, information security awareness inevitably leads to increasing the global organizational security awareness. And this is an opportunity to reduce any potential negative impact on our business environment and the wider society. Moreover, where organizations already operate ISO compliant management systems, additional system, systems can be integrated, thus paving the way to further improvements which translates into cost optimization and increases your business impact accuracy. Okay, this said, and I think that I have seen a couple of questions already popping on the screen. 
I shall thank you for listening and take the questions we have received. Uh, Martin, may I ask for the questions to be to be now brought up brought up on screen, please, one by one, if when possible. Thank you. And uh, depending on the time we have, I think we have time enough. I may not be able to answer all your questions, but I would like to invite you to ask them via email on marketing at imsm.com. So now we'll be taking your questions. First question, thank you, marketing. First question, are ISO standards compulsory? I see. Okay. Thank you for this question. Uh, adherence to best practices and uh, conformity to ISO standards is voluntary. Organizations may make their choice and decide on whether to implement a system, what system may be needed and whether to certify it against the ISO standards applicable. Now, I'd like to bring your attention back to the fact that your stakeholders may request for your organization to operate a management system and to be able to prove that the system does conform or the systems do conform to their particular requirements. For instance, it is UK law, it is also EU law, um, with explanation that, e that each EU country uh, has their own uh, law implemented since 2018, uh, that some organisations must comply with the relevant international standards. We're talking here organizations of a specific size that handle data or operate in the strategic sectors or are part of such a supply chain. It has um, certainly become US law as well. So uh, you need to identify your stakeholders and eventually identify their particular needs in order to be fully aware of what your stakeholders require to be done. Next question, please. How does ISO 27001 protect the organization from cyber attacks and regulatory non-compliance. Okay. This is a very interesting question. I shall approach it with caution and say that what actually protects your organization is not the standard itself, but your information security management system. Most organizations do have information security management systems, although these may be mature, for instance, based on static checklists or limited to a specific country only such as the cybersecurity essentials in the UK, or maybe ad hoc organizations who react only to address, not to prevent and protect. I saw 27001, as well as the rest of the 27000 family of standards, offers a solid framework and a set of good practices probably the most exhaustive set of good practices altogether, 
that helps organizations design, implement, maintain, and continually improve their information security management systems. It is also a certifiable standard, meaning that should organizations need to evaluate their system performance, they could invite a third-party certification body, which is an independent body, and get an independent certification. And this external certification would be carried out on an annual basis, which further improves the system. Next question, please. How quickly can an ISO system be implemented? It is a challenge, it is challenging to give an orientation. There are as many answers to this question as potential customers. Uh, most importantly, we need to know which management system you would require. If it's uh, 27,001 or 22,301, which would be information security or business continuity, uh, I should advise that a frequent issue that organizations face is the internal need for information and cybersecurity professionals. Uh, the whole industry continues to suffer across all sectors from an acute shortage of experts. And uh, this, raises a, this raises particular concern about how quickly organizations will react and adhere uh, to any information security regulatory framework. So if you talk to us at Amazon, we have a robust methodology which allows us to speed up the process, but organizations need to devote some resources, uh, although we can help there and uh, train your resources and upskill your experts. Next question, please. What reassurance do ISO compliant management systems offer? Uh, again, I guess this is about information security or business continuity. Let's focus on the, these two. Uh, ISO compliant management systems 2230127001 could give reassurance to the extent of the scope defined. Uh, that would be or could be part of the organization, locations, size, nature of complexity, as well as specific products or services. We can include those within the scope as well. I think we have half a minute for a very last question. May I have it on screen, please? What are the benefits of ISO standards? Okay. Well, uh, I suspect that the question refers to ISO management system standards. Again, there might be as many answers to this question as organizations. ISO management system standards have many benefits. Uh, I, want, I want to highlight the fact that these standards are focus, focused on the organizational environment and on identifying the needs and requirements of the relevant parties. And these systems are also certifiable. This said, thank you again. I think that we are about to run out of time. So thank you, marketing. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow uh, for our next talk. Thank you again.